Hello and welcome to another booktube video from me, Martha May Books, and today I have for you my January wrap-up. I've already filmed my January wrap-up once before, or twice before, and then I read another book and I wanted to include it, so I've just decided to do it all because otherwise it would be one clip of everything and then just one thrown on the end. So I've decided to do all of them in one go. Also, I've got a new reading and filming area, so <laughs> this armchair is like properly shoved in the corner of my room but I really like it I'm so excited so I've got an armchair now let's talk about books so the first book that I finished in January was Grown Ups by Marion Keys so I read this for the Sykes and Savage book club that Simon Savage has on his channel Savage Reads which is a book club that they run. I enjoy reading the books along with them. It's fun to watch the videos if you haven't read the books but it's even more fun to watch the videos if you have read the books because then it's like you're in a book club but you don't have to say intelligent things. You could just listen to other people say intelligent things. It's a good time. I have started, if I can get the book from the online library, I have started reading along with the Sykes and Savage book club and the book for January or maybe February, I'm not really sure, the live show still not come out, at least not the live show, the book club discussion still hasn't come out as far as I know, um, but I'm looking forward to it when it does. So Grown Ups is completely outside of my normal comfort zone, like I would not have read this book if it wasn't for the book club. I just don't read adult contemporary fiction, generally sometimes I might, but in general not. But I really like this. I gave it five stars and it follows this massive family in Ireland that I would say is fairly drama filled but I think it depends on how dramatic your family is, whether you think it's drama filled, but you follow all of the various couples within the story and their children after one of the women in the family reveals <laughs> everybody's secrets at a dinner party after having a concussion and I really liked it. I loved all of the Irish turns of phrases and in my mind I was reading it in an Irish accent and I liked some of the characters, I hated other characters but that's part of the fun of reading is being like I hate this guy. I just really liked it and I'm so glad that I read it and I'm looking forward to the live show. And then the next book that I read in January, this was an audiobook that I listened to whilst walking my dog and that was Mortimer and White House Gone Fishing by Bob Mortimer and Paul Whitehouse. So Gone Fishing is <laughs> this lovely TV show um, which is stars Bob Mortimer and Paul Whitehouse who are two older comedians from the UK. They go fishing and they talk about life and death and it's fun. It's a very cosy watch. If you have access to um, the iPlayer, I would recommend watching it. it it's very cosy and the audiobook was great. I gave it four stars and the reason I didn't give it five stars was because audiobooks and books are the same on Goodreads and um, I don't know how this book would be because a lot of this audiobook was more like a podcast um, where they have banter and they chat and they also take the podcast equipment or the audio equipment to the riverbank and they fish together and we listen to them fish which was probably my favourite chapter. So I didn't give it five stars for that because someone might then pick up the actual book. I saw a lot of people picking up the actual book and being quite confused, um, but because I haven't read it and don't care to because I think the audiobook's probably better anyway, um, but I probably would give the audiobook 4.5 to five stars because it's very cute, it's very fun, there's a lot of banter, there's a lot about how they made the TV show, how they first met, their starts in their careers. It's a lovely time. I'd really recommend it if you like the show or you like one of the two of them or both. Then the next book that I finished in January was The Darkest Bloom by P.M. Freestone or uh, it, which is the first book in the Shadow Scent duology. So this is a YA fantasy set in um, like a deserty place because when I read the blurb of this I really thought it was going to be a uh, like a medieval fantasy, you know, classic like set in a castle. It's set in desert places and it follows a girl called Raquel whose father has the rot um, which is a disease that they have in this universe where your body rots away and she is looking to become an apprentice 
kind of perfumer because she's got a really good snout on her to get money to for his cure because in this world their religious their religious system and also their magic system are based around scent and so perfumers are really important and she wants to become one and then we also follow ash who is the bodyguard to a prince and is great <laughs> i like them both okay so then they both meet they end up meeting up and pairing together for a quest that has that they have joint interest in completing and the quest is uh hunting for a cure and they go from place to place to place to place gathering ingredients for the cure which I like as a story because it's kind of predictable there's like a riddle that they have to figure out which is quite fun and there's this is super fast paced like I haven't read a lot of YA fantasy in recent years I've read a lot more adult fantasy I completely forgot how fast paced they are but I feel like this is fast paced even for a YA fantasy because at the start of the book she goes in for this um like perfume apprentice trial right so my assumption was like okay this book because I didn't realize it was a duology I thought it could be part of a larger series um this book is going to be her being a perfumer apprentice and then it's like oh no okay we're done with that plot so this book's going to be her being an apprentice to this person oh we're done with that plot and like you just jump from plot to plot but it's not a bad thing especially because I was reading The Fellowship of the Ring at the same time as reading this and so it was really nice to just have something fast-paced where a lot happened I think I read like 200 pages of this in a day because I was just excited that I could understand it without really having to try. Um, I really enjoyed this and then the final book that I finished, I've already spoken about it, in January was The Fellowship of the Ring. So this is my big bind up of the whole series. The Fellowship of the Ring. This was a reread for me. I read this the first time I was probably 17, maybe 16. I reread it last month i gave it four stars but to be honest i don't know what i rate this i liked it when i could understand what was happening i skipped most of the songs because i cannot be reading like two pages of poems about elves and orcs and things and i like sam <laughs> that's about it I enjoyed this but it definitely was difficult for me to get through and I ended up going for the audiobook and listening to that while I walked because I kept falling asleep whilst I was reading this. No, <laughs> sorry, I just remembered saying this on booktube and I was like, wait, have I already put my wrap up out? No, I said it in my February TBR. I kept falling asleep while I was reading this and I ended up just having to listen to the audiobook because I was not getting through it otherwise because I would just be asleep. I like it, it's a very cute story, it's definitely more fun. I found this wonderful audiobook of like an old man reading it and that is fun except I do still have to skip the songs. I just cannot with the songs. I think it's lovely that Tolkien wrote all of these songs and I think that's great and it would have been so fun as a child to have these as your bedtime stories and have the person reading them to you like dance around the room and sing a song that would have been fun but when i'm like already falling asleep i don't need four pages of poems about elves there's that but i did have to keep skipping the songs as well just because like some of them would play for like two minutes i'm like i haven't got time to be listening to this but what i'm saying is i think i liked it but there was another thing i realized i don't really love in fantasy even though i just said i really liked it in this book generally i don't love a journey in fantasy i quite like the political intrigue all of the court situations or some kind of mystery, you know, the betrayals and all of that. I like the kind of political side of fantasy and then like it's fun because there's dragons or elves and stuff like that it makes it more fun than just a standard history about politics because that is boring. But I, I don't love reading about people walking. <laughs> It's just not something that I generally seek out and I know this about myself anyway. I always like my stories to be quite grounded in a setting and so for example in the Game of Thrones books, Song of Ice and Fire books, I <laughs> didn't like it when everyone started straying and roaming the country like um, and straying away from their homes. I don't like that because I like things to be set. I don't know why I just really don't love just reading about people walking endlessly and camping in the woods and having to set a watch. Um, so I'm gonna have loads of fun with the rest of the series because that's what happens. So anyway, that's that book. A bit of rambling about Lord of the Rings. I feel like most people know what it's about. If you don't, I'll give you a little recap. Basically, Frodo's uncle, 
stole a ring that now Frodo has to sort out his mess. And that's the story. And when you're as sleepy as I am as a person, reading The Lord of the Rings isn't the best choice. And those are all of the books that I read in January. I didn't have a great reading month in terms of quantity, but all of these books I rated four stars apart from Grown Ups, which I rated five stars. So even though I only read four books, which is more than most Januarys actually, um, I read, I really liked all of the ones that I read. Well, <laughs> Fellowship's a difficult one because I don't, I just cannot give Fellowship of the Ring three stars. That's just not within my power to do, but <laughs> it definitely sits weirdly in my brain. Like, did I enjoy that experience or? My battery's flashing at me now. I'm gonna go and edit this video and upload it because it is Sunday night and I don't have a video for Monday. Well, I do now if I edit it. Talk, stop talking to you and edit it. I'm gonna go and do that now. Goodbye.